start by thanking Jim Canton and Tatiana Schumann for organizing this session, and especially Tatiana for urging me to be part of it. Um, my goal is to convince you to think seriously about using Pencan as a possible topic for a circle, either a teacher circle or a student circle. Um, let's take about two minutes to think about uh, two questions, two, two related questions. Uh, what is it about problem solving uh, that that makes it uh, the lifeblood of mathematics. Uh, I, I agree that they're, they're mathematicians, uh, important mathematicians who build theory, but uh, I think we all realize that problems is really the, what we spend a lot of our time doing. And I'd like to uh, solicit uh, opinions about what it is that's attractive about problem solving and, and also, a second related question, um, how, um, what, what kinds of problems lend themselves especially well to math circles, math circles and teacher circles? So anybody want to jump in and um, have a go at that? Well, I think for the last, for your second question, uh, problems that don't require lots of uh, preliminary background and right. technical Ex results. Accessible <laughs> on lots of levels. Yeah. But on the other hand, they should be able to go somewhere and be interested. You know, Open-ended, kind of. Yeah, and uh, have some able to, to, to go in several directions from, uh, from, from the initial question. I think that's an important part, especially especially for our, for uh, student circles. I feel like solving problems is the equivalent of, of asking questions and answering questions and getting to know somebody. It's a way you get to know mathematics in a way. That's a good point. Um, well, okay, so let's, uh, let's begin, in, in, in case you, you don't know uh, uh, Ken Ken, let me explain that uh, it's uh, somewhat like Sudoku in the sense that the, the final solution <laughs> is a, uh, a Latin square, uh, a collection of matrix, an n by n matrix of numbers one through n with each, with a one, a two, a three, and so on in each row and each column. Now in this four by four Ken Ken puzzle, uh, you can see that there are some heavily outlined cells called cages. Uh, each cage has a clue, mathematical clue associated with it. And uh, a clue now is a target number together with an operation. So, for example, in this cage, we're talking about uh, trying to find two numbers whose sum is seven. Uh, here we're trying to find three numbers whose product is 16. So, if I were doing this in a, in a, uh, a session for seventh and eighth graders, I would uh, ask them to solve this problem and then to explain their solution to their partner. And then I would ask them to <coughs> look at this collection of cages and build a kin kin problem using the alphabet 2468 instead of 1234. I would ask them to stare at this stare at their solution and come up with the clues and targets for those cages that would make one, two, three, that would make two, four, six, and eight solutions. And eventually someone would say, well gee, this is just the same puzzle. 
And then we would be able to talk about isomorphism between two kin kin games. So you should all have a copy of this. And if you'll play with it for just a minute, um, I'm going to distribute some an, another handout. And then I want to get on to a, 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 another problem that, that I think is more elegant than this one. Do you have any extra copies? Yeah. I, I, think I, I, uh, I, have, I think enough copies of this handout for everyone. There's uh, two handouts that, that have gone out already. Um, but let's see if I have enough of these. That has to be one five. 
So now, ask yourself, what is the sum of all the numbers that we see in here? Well, we don't know what these numbers are, but we know they add up to 9. We know that these four cells are filled with a 2, 3, 4, and 6. And these two cells are 1 and 5. So when we add all that up, we get a multiple of 3. Let's see, it's 9 plus 8 plus 7. 24 plus 6 more is 30. So the sum of these nine cells is 30. Now ask yourself about the possibility of this of the two divides cage. It's either 1, 2, 2, 4, or 3, 6. All three of those are multiples of 3. So that means that all the numbers, all these 11 numbers missing this one, is a multiple of 3. Now, the sum of each row is 21. So the sum of these two rows together is 42. Now, these 11 together is a multiple of 3, and all 12 together is a multiple of 3. That means x or y. X, X and Y have to be multiple of 3, so it has to be 3, 6. So this, this should give you an idea of the, the level of uh, clever thinking that, that you can bring to bear on the problems of, of this sort. Uh, I've got how much time do I have to One minute. One minute. One minute. <laughs> All right.